I made a video about, um, I'd rather put up a post, but Scarlett. Scarlett's story is similar to mine's. She didn't have a mother or father. Her aunt raised her. Her uncle abused her. Then she got put out into the streets. Now, my whole thing is, Scarlett is a beautiful young soul. I love that little girl. But I also see the own um, insecurities in her. Mm. And niggas in the hood is going to see your insecurities and they're going to play on you. And they're going to devour you, sweetie. The industry is going to devour you, sweetie. If the women ain't going to tell you to learn from their mistakes, I'm going to tell you. A lot of these grown ass women out here, they want to see Scarlett fall on her face. Because mm. they done got fucked by 50 niggas in the first month of coming out outside. So instead of warning these young girls, they'll, they'll sit back and say, oh, she's grown. Mm. No, she's still a baby. And the truth of the matter is white people mature faster than black people. Black people, more, especially black men, don't become a man till they get 40 years old. Niggas are still living with their mama. Mm. So my whole thing is for people like Scarlett, like, yo, don't go down the path of Little Kim. Little Kim was beautiful until she ran into a nigga that played on her. It made her feel like she wasn't beautiful. The whole world had posters of Little Kim in their jail cells. We was loving on Little Kim. Until the wrong nigga came across her. And I could see with Scarlett, I could see it a mile away. So it's not me dissing her when I say, baby girl, put some clothes on. Mm. Because you're insecure. And men can see those insecurities. And when you let the wrong man get up on you, it's over for her. He's going to break her. Scarlett and Sexy Red kind of came out around the same time. And I feel like Sexy Red's content might be a little bit more one-sided. A little bit more just straight, ratchet, debaucherous shit. Is that kind of a depressing uh, scenario in hip-hop from your perspective? That the one that becomes massively successful seems like the one who's maybe pushing like a more negative stereotype? Well... Sexy Red is a hood booger. <laughs> she's the epitome. Where we come from in New York, that's our slang. This is our, she's a hood booger. Define so, hood booger. Some shit that we would naturally wouldn't even fuck. Mm. And if we did, we would tell everybody we didn't fuck her. She's the hood booger that made it. The filthy bitch from the block. That's what she is. She's the filthy bitch from the, the ratchet, the nigga. You see her, she all on the video, a nigga spitting in the pussy. That's the hood booger. Mm. Now, we done seen these devils that run the industry that took the hood booger and made our household name. So now you ain't got to have the, we, we, you ain't got to have the Virgin Mary in you. Mm. You can literally just get, <laughs> have a, the whole world say a nigga spit on your pussy and you somebody. Mm. But, Sexy Red is built for this shit. Scarlet is not. Mm. You can see the difference. Sexy Red, a little bitch, you probably could take on a shootout. Right. Scarlet is not. It seems like Sexy Red's definitely been involved in that. Because I remember very early on her talking about being out and about with her, her boyfriend and, and having dudes pull up and try to kill him right in front of her. Then I see the old videotapes of her hanging out at FBG Duck. And I'm like, oh, OK. So she's Hoodbooker. she's really this type of bitch. She's yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? And the last thing you want to do is have a baby born in the womb of a hoodbooker. Because then your son going to grow up to be what? Mm. He's going to jail. Mm. He's going to jail. A real father wants his child to do better than him. A real fa a father wants the world for his child. These niggas out here don't want the world. Well, some of them do. I will never forget, and I say this all the time, when I seen Jim Jones' son at the camp, at the lake, with the white kids talking proper, this shit infuriated me. Mm. Because all of the people I seen around Jim Jones that died or went to jail, when you in a leadership position, you're not supposed to lead your, 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 your peoples to the penitentiary. Now, when I look at Jim Jones, I like what he's doing with Dice Pesos. Mm -hmm. Dice Pesos is rising up. People recognizing him and he's doing right by him. So I want to acknowledge dudes too when I see them doing right as well. Because a lot of dudes that's in position to put another rapper on, they won't. Mm -hmm. And they'll keep on standing in the limelight in the front until the ship sank. Won't put nobody on. Right. Definitely. Um, okay, so... Uh, uh, going back to the Kendrick and Drake thing, what is your overall impression of exactly how this whole thing has been unfolding? You consider this good for hip hop, especially since it seems like it's kind of unlikely to turn into a, a violent conflict? Well, for me, 
I think that hip hop has been too watered down. This is oh, this is overdue. Right. But I feel like the content coming from these niggas is soft. It's not giving me that old school Fifty Cent going that Ja Rule feel. Mm. It's like all right, y'all beefing, but uh, where's the where's the powerful records at? It's not yeah. and and J Cole. Oh my God, like <laughs> that was I just, disappointing to you. I just I just like <sighs> like what are we do what are we doing here? He got me thinking. I done left hip hop. Whatever. I'm like, wait, well, damn, is this a, it's a conspiracy? If you know something that we don't know, mm. is World War Three getting ready to happen, and you just don't want us distracted from that? Right. Like, what are you really, really doing? This is hip hop, my nigga. Mm. Well, you are not decking nobody, but you gonna say some shit that's gonna make us quote it for the next thirty years. Right. That's hip hop. The bridge is over. The bridge is over. And you know, I don't like KRS One. I can't stand KRS One, but the bridge is over. Why don't you like KRS One? Because he sat up there and said that um he, he stood with Bambada. He said that we got to make him unfallible. I don't care what he did. Uh, He's still my leader. And this was before or after you came out? After I came out. Really? And he still said that? Yeah. Wow, that's kind of shocking. Yeah. Damn. Um, But I think when you look at like TakeOver and Ether, I mean, those are both full-fledged diss records where it didn't seem like anything was was off the table. And if you look at like the worst things that have been said in the Kendrick and Drake thing, I mean... Drake's probably had the most aggressive bars up to this point. We're kind of waiting to see where Kendrick is going to take it. But yeah, I mean, there's a strong incentive with these guys to be a little bit more low key about it, I think. Or at least in this case, it seems like they're kind of like baiting each other before the full all out war happens. Nah, they got to come out swinging. I, I need the Kendrick, right? Because I'm going, I, I got to go with Kendrick because mm. I believe Kendrick right as shit. I need the Kendrick that's on that song with, um, with Game the City. Mm. The way he was spitting, I need that Kendrick. Mm. I need that Kendrick. He's got a lot more to work with, too, because Drake's beef and Drake's drama and Drake's messy ass love life is like right out there for him to cherry pick for lyrics versus Kendrick still with his high school sweetheart. He's, and everything that we know about him on a personal level is shit that he's kind of divulged himself over the years in the music, right? Man, when it comes to hip hop, it ain't like you can say anything, mm. but you know, I'm, I'm waiting. I need something to make me turn the radio back on mm. because it's not like. Music suck right now. For me, music suck. 